Hello everyone, welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox Studio tutorial. Today we're going to do something very exciting. We're going to learn about developer products in Roblox. The reason it's very exciting is because it can give you a chance to earn Robux. So basically a developer product is an item that a user can purchase inside a game. It's very similar to a game pass, but a game pass you can only purchase the item only one time in the game. But with the developer product, you can purchase the item over and over and over again inside game, multiple times. And that is why a developer product can be very exciting because a user can keep on purchasing the same product over and over again each time they play the game. Let us now learn how to create a developer product first, and then I'm going to show you how to script it inside your game. So let's take, for example, I want to create a developer product for this game right here. So I'm going to click on it and then I get a menu bar on the left side. I'm going to look for developer products, which is right on top of passes. Click on developer products. This game currently does not have any developer products. I'm going to just go and click on create a developer product. On this next page here, you can upload an image for your product if you like. I'm just going to use the default for the name I have entered. I want to live for the description I have entered. You have died. Want to continue here? Question mark. And if you go down, you can indicate the price of this product. I'm just going to say three Robux for this product. Click on create developer product. And there it is. We have created a developer product. I'm now going to create a second developer product for this game. So that my game is going to have two different developer products. So I can show you how to operate a game with multiple developer products. So I'm just going to do this real quick. My second item, the name is Magical Health Potion. And the description is use it on demand to restore your health to max health. And it is also for sale for three Robux. Create developer product. So now I have two different developer product for this game. One is called I Wanna Live and the other one is called Magical Health Potion. And now let's go back to studio. We're gonna look at how to script this inside your game. Here we are back inside studio. You can see I have a kill brick here, which is just a regular part. There's no script to it. But now we're going to go to our service script service. We're going to add a script. The script is named kill player script. Let's open up the script and take a look. So basically here I'm declaring my part. My part is going to be the kill brick inside the workspace. It's this one right here. All right. So whenever a player touches this part, it kicks off the touch event here. And it's going to connect to this function. We're checking for humanoid that is touching the part. This is my debouncing. The next two lines here is to prompt our developer product purchase. So first we want to get the player that is touching the part and we're going to prompt the player with the product ID, which means we're going to have to update this product ID here. So I'm going to go back to the website where I have created the developer product and this product is going to be the I want to live product. So I'm going to click on the three dots here and copy asset ID, come back to my script. I'm going to paste that new ID in. All right, so this here is going to prompt the player with the product. And here the player has a choice either to cancel or to accept. Down here, we have a prompt product purchase finish. It is an event that is fired when the player closes the window up here. So when the player either click on cancel or accept to buy the product, it's going to fire this event, the prompt product purchase event, in which case it's going to connect to this function. These, these parameters are automatically passed in. So we're passing in the user ID, the product ID, and a Boolean variable, whether the player has purchased the product or has denied cancel the product. So if the player has purchased the product, this Boolean variable here is purchased, it's going to be true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. So down here, we're checking that variable. If the product has not been purchased, we're going to kill the player by setting the player health to zero. So if the player has purchased the product, then it's not going to go inside this if statement and the player is not going to die. Let's now play test and take a look. So there's my kill brick. Now, if I go and touch it, you can see it offered me to buy this product. Would you like to buy I Wanna Live for three Robux? So I have a choice here, either to cancel or to buy it. Either way, whichever button I'm pressing, this window here is gonna disappear 
and it's going to fire this prompt product purchase finish. Again, if I click cancel, is purchase is going to be false. If I click this button here, is purchase is going to be true. So now let me click this button here. So I'm buying the product, your purchase of I want to live succeeded. Click OK. And you can see that I'm alive. I didn't die. But now if I go and touch it again, it's asking me again, would you like to buy I want to live? In this case, I'm going to click cancel. But before I cancel, I just want to point out something. When you're testing inside Studio, you can see there is a message here that says, this is a test purchase. Your account will not be charged. So you can test this inside Studio as much as you like. Your account is not going to be charged. So in this case, I'm just going to cancel and watch. I'm dead. All right, so if I didn't buy the developer product to save my character, I would die because I touched the kill brick. But even though I touched the kill brick, I can buy a developer product to save me from dying and to continue where I'm left off inside the game. All right, so this is one way to do it, is to listen for the prompt product purchase finish event to process your developer product purchase. But before we continue to our second example, I just want to show you something. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to prompt that event. So prompt product, prompt product purchase finish. And let's read up about it. Fires when a purchase prompt closes for a developer product. You can use this event to detect when a purchase prompt is closed. But there's a big but here. It should not be used to process purchases. Instead, use marketplace service process receipt. So Roblox does not recommend that we do it this way. Instead, they recommend that we use the process receipt to process all the um, developer products transactions. So in our next example, we're going to look at the process receipt to see how we can use that to process our transactions of the developer products. All right, so now we are done with this kill player script. I'm just going to close it and I'm going to move it inside the server storage. So it's no longer being used. Instead, we are replacing that one script with these two scripts here. So first we have a slow kill script. For the slow kill script, first we're declaring the kill brick, which is going to be the same kill brick here. But the kill brick now is not going to kill you immediately, but it's going to kill you slowly. This is typical in a lot of games where you don't get killed right away, but you lose your health over time. And eventually, if you lose uh, too much health, you're going to die. All right, so let's go over the script. First, we're declaring the marketplace service followed by the product ID. We got to go back to our product here. We got to copy the asset ID of the product and come back over here and paste it in as we have done before. Now down here, we have a touch event. So our, our part here is going to have a touch event. The kill brick is going to have a touch event and it's going to connect to this function. Here we're checking for humanoid. This is our debouncing. And we're getting the player, which we're going to use to prompt the product to the player with the product ID. And when do we show the player this prompt? It is when the player health is equal to or less than 30 health. So when the player loses health and his or her health goes down to 30 or below, and that is when we're going to prompt the player with the product purchase, at which time the player has a choice to make either to cancel, to decline the, the purchase, or to accept the purchase. Which brings us to this other script, process dev product purchases. And here is where we're using the process receipt callback as suggested by Roblox. So let's go over the script. On the first line here, we're declaring the marketplace service followed by these products ID. So let me fill them in. So I want to live is going to be the one we copied earlier. So I'm just going to paste it in. And I'm going to go and copy the magical potion. Here is the magical health potion. I'm just going to copy asset ID here. Go back and paste it into here. Process receipt here is our callback function from down here. So whenever a player makes a purchase of the developer product, it's going to kick off this function. And let's take a look at the function. Here, the receipt info is automatically passed in. From the receipt info, we can get the player ID and the product ID. We're using the user ID to get the player. If we find the player, we're going to process the product purchase. So here we have two different products here. Um, the first one is the one we're doing right now, the one that says, I want to live. So we're checking the ID of the product from the receipt info here. Again, it is being passed in automatically. 
if the ID matches the I want to live ID, which is declared up here, we copy that from the asset ID of the product. If it matches, then we're going to get the humanoid of the character. If we find the humanoid of the character, then we're going to set the health of the humanoid to max health, which is going to give the player max health. And the next line here, we're just letting Roblox know that the purchase has been granted. So everything went well and the purchase has been granted. On the other hand, if it goes through here and we do not grant the purchase to the player, then it's going to skip through and it's going to come down to here. And we're going to let Roblox know that the purchase is not processed yet. So we're passing this back to Roblox, which then Roblox will automatically retry the next time the user joins the game. But there is no refund. So Roblox is just going to retry the, the transaction again each time the user enters the game in the future. But there is no refund for the purchase. The next section here is for the other developer product, which we're going to go over later. But for now, let's play test and take a look. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm going to hop onto this and you can see it's taking away my health slowly, but not everything at one time. And that is because there is a slow kill script here. So each time I touch that board, I'm only going to lose 10 health. And when my health goes below 30, it's going to prompt me to see if I want to buy a developer product. I want to lift to give me max health. Let's go back and take a look. So here my health is back to 100 already. I'm going to hop back on this. And now I'm losing health. You can see I'm losing health, right? When my health goes to below 30 or equal to 30, it's going to prompt me to buy the developer product. And there it is. So here I have uh, two choices. If I click cancel, then nothing is going to happen. My health is still down here. So let me go back up here and it should prompt me to buy it again. Okay, there it is. But in this case now, I'm going to accept. I'm going to buy I want to live. Click on this. And you see, it says your purchase of I want to live succeeded. Click OK and you can see my health is back to 100%. That was an example of how to script the developer product using the process receipt as suggested by Roblox. And now we're going to look at a second example. In our next example here, we have a uh, potion bottle here. And our potion bottle has a script. Let's take a look at the script. So in our script, we have a touch event and it has a product ID. So let me copy that product ID again. This is going to be for the magical health potion. And I'm going to go back and paste it over here. This touch event here belongs to the health potion bottle, magical health potion. So whenever a player touches this potion bottle, it's going to check for humanoid. We're going to prompt the player with the product. The product, again, is that product ID that we have just copied and pasted into here. If the player buys the product, it's going to kick off this callback process receipt here, and it's going to go into this function again. It is the same function that we have done earlier for the other case, but in this case, it is the magical potion. So it's going to go through everything the same way before, and it's going to get down to this if statement as opposed to this if statement. This process receipt callback should only be set once and only once by a single script inside your game. So even if your game has multiple different products, you should only have this at one location in a single script inside your game. And this is going to handle all the different transactions for all the developer products. And that is why this function here, the process receipt function, the callback, is going to process all different cases. You can see up here we have one case, the I want to lift case. And the second case here is the magical potion case. And if you have another case, a third case, you're just going to add another if statement here to check for the third developer product. Previously, we have seen how this I want to live uh, product work. Now let's take a look at the magical potion product to see how this works. So basically, when the player buys this product, it's going to go into here. We're going to check is does the ID matches. If it does, we're going to look for the player's backpack. If we find the backpack of the player, we're going to give the player a magical health potion, which is from our server storage. So inside our server storage, we have a magical health potion tool. 
To learn how to make tools in Roblox, you can refer to our channel for more details. We have a whole playlist on how to make tools, how everything works with tools and weapons in Roblox. All right, so basically here, I made a tool, I put it inside the service storage, and when the player buys this developer product, I'm gonna give the player this tool, which is the magical health potion. Basically, we're just gonna clone that potion from the service storage, and we're gonna put it inside the player's backpack. And then again, we gotta return this back to Roblox, purchase granted, so that Roblox knows that this purchase is completed. Now, my magical health potion tool has a script. Let's take a look at the script. And here's the script. So when the tool is equipped, I'm gonna get the player. And then I'm gonna get the humanoid of the, the character. And then I'm gonna give the character max health. After that, we're destroying the tool. So we're taking away the tool. It's a one-time use only. So we're taking away the tool from the player. Let us now play test and take a look. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get this tool. So I'm gonna touch this bottle here. And it offers me to buy this developer product for three Robux. Would you like to buy Magical Health Potion for three Robux? Again, when you're testing inside Roblox Studio, this is a test purchase only, so your account will not be charged. I'm just gonna cancel. And you can see there's nothing happening, right? But now I'm gonna go back again and touch this. It offers me again to buy this Magical Health Potion. This time, I'm gonna buy it. And it says, your purchase of Magical Health Potion succeeded. Click OK. You can see I have a tool inside my backpack now. Now if I go and I should lose my health somehow inside my game, right? You can see my health is coming down here, right? So I'm about to die. So what I can do is now I can use my potion. I have regained full health and my potion is gone because it is a one-time use only. Now, if I go and lose health again, you can see my health is going down, but I have no more potion. So I cannot regain all my potion or my health back unless if I go and buy another death product. So I'm going to buy another one here. I get the new potion and I can use it again to regain all my health back. If you want to learn more about Roblox tools, you can come to our channel, PriceCP Roblox. Scroll down to the How To Series section, click on View All, and here we have Roblox Tools and Weapons, all you need to know. Just click on View Full Playlist. In this playlist, you will find all the different tutorials that are related to tools and weapons inside Roblox. Guys, hope you have enjoyed this video and find it to be helpful. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in our next tutorial. Take care everyone, peace. Mm -hmm.